Schistosomiasis is estimated to affect over 200 million people worldwide and kills over 200,000 a year. It is common in Latin America, the Middle East, particularly Egypt, Asia and Africa. The parasite is a flat worm or fluke that is found in tropical slow-moving water and transmitted by freshwater snails. This is an example of a freshwater snail that harbours schistosome larvae. The schistosome life cycle really begins when the eggs are passed in human faeces or urine into the water. The schistosome eggs then hatch into the first larval stage or myricidia. And here is a picture of a myricidium, that's a schistosome larva. The myricidia then enter the freshwater snails. In the snails, the larvae develop into the second larval stage or cercaria. The scaria are then transmitted from the snails into the water. Here is an example of the second larval stage or cercaria. The cercaria then swim in the slow moving water and penetrate the human skin. The problem is that the larvae are equipped to penetrate intact human skin. People at risk of infection include those working in paddy fields and children playing in faecal contaminated water. After the larvae penetrate the skin, symptoms include itching and blister formation. After the larvae have entered the skin, they then make their way into the venous system and mature into adult schistosome worms. And here you can see a vein containing schistosome worms. The schistosome worms reproduce and the females can then produce 200 or more eggs per day. It is the eggs that cause the problems in schistosomiasis because they result in an immune response causing granulomas and fibrosis. The part of the body affected by schistosomiasis depends on the particular species. Monsoni and Japonicum infect the gut and liver, whereas Hematobium infects the bladder. These are the main three species of schistosomiasis, but there are many other types. In the Hematobium species of schistosomiasis, the worms enter the pelvic venous system, the eggs are deposited in the bladder wall and cause fibrosis. This results in hematuria and inflammation and eventually squamous metaplasia and this can develop into squamous cell carcinoma. In fact, in countries where schistosomiasis is endemic, squamous cell carcinoma is the most common type of bladder cancer. Incidentally, Schistosoma hematobium was first identified by Theodore Bilharz in Egypt in 1851, and this is why the term Bilharzia is an alternative name for the condition of schistosomiasis. And this is an example of schistosomiasis in the bladder. This is a bladder biopsy showing two well-formed granulomas with schistosome eggs in the middle of them. And this is a higher power view of one of the granulomas. In this bladder biopsy, the eggs have calcified and the surrounding tissue shows dense fibrosis. In the Mansoni and Japonicum types of schistosomiasis, the worms enter the portal venous system, and the eggs are deposited in the liver, causing granulomas and pipe stem fibrosis, resulting in portal hypertension. In the gut, there is inflammation and pseudopolyp formation, 
and the eggs may make their way into the lungs, causing granulomatous pulmonary arteritis and eventually core pulmonale. This is an example of schistosomiasis affecting the liver. Finally, the life cycle is completed when the schistosome eggs pass in the faeces or urine into the stagnant water. Thank you.